Hi friends, Um, today is going to be a little bit of a different episode. Jenna is not with me, but I have another very special guest. Um, I'm recording with my husband Brady today, and we're doing an episode that we've kind of been wanting to do for a while, and um, it just finally worked out. So it's going to be an episode episode all about marriage, um, what the pros and cons uh, are of being married young, um, the things that we've had to work through, uh, the marriage advice that we have for being married uh, a year and a half now, um, and we're gonna wrap it up with a few funny things at the end, so yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, today Brady is gonna be telling us actually what we are drinking, so take it away. So we made a coffee and well actually No, I thought we made something else. Okay. <laughs> Tell them about the coffee we made. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gabber got me an arrow press for Valentine's Day. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's just like I don't how do you explain it? You, I actually haven't even used it yet, so I don't um, really know. Yeah, you kinda put the coffee up above your cup and then it you mix it together and then you press it down through and so then the coffee's going straight into your cup, if that makes sense. It went straight in... Oh, I did not know even know Yeah. That. Okay. And so it's something you just kind of... And there's like a cup. little filter, right? Yeah, there's in a little it... paper filter you put in there. Okay. Um, Yeah, so it's really quick and easy. And because it's going through the beans so fast, it lowers the acidity of it. Acidity? As- acidity, as- I think. Yeah, acidity? I it lowers the acid in the cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, so it's really quick and easy to clean up, really quick and easy to make, and... And it's yeah. really good. And then so like what it's really right. It's kind of strong. Yeah. So it's the, like an espresso. It's like espresso. Yeah. So then what we did is we added hot water to it mm-hmm. to make like an Americano. And we used a light roast Colombian because I've been really big into light roast coffee. Yeah. Really. And then we just added some half and half to it. That's been our big kick lately. We actually haven't been buying creamers at all. We just have half and half. Um, we have heavy whipping cream in there for like baking. And so mm-hmm. I've been. Uh, not baking cooking and so i've been putting it in and it's actually just a little bit of heavy whipping cream we talked about that in another episode it's so good and then if we want something sweeter we just use honey or syrup or yeah we use honey or maple, maple syrup, syrup or yeah. um yeah that's kind of it we have some sugar in the raw in there but we haven't used that in a long time mm-hmm. um yeah trying to be healthier with our coffee intake mm-hmm. okay so we are just going to uh jump right in we just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about our background story uh when we met um Yeah, so I guess I'll just start. We met, it was my senior year of high school and Brady's junior year of high school. Um, I am one year older than him. He moved to Gettysburg, South Dakota, which is where we both are kind of from. Brady's also from Minnesota. So um, he moved to Gettysburg when he was a sophomore. He grew up in Waconia, Minnesota. So that's really close to the city. It's like an hour, right, to Minneapolis, St. Paul area um and so at this time I was like trying to figure out my life like as a senior where am I going to go to school uh all that kind of stuff and so I was definitely not looking for a relationship and I had never been in a relationship and I would say that there was a time in high school when I really wanted to be in a relationship but at this time I actually was very content not being in one I was excited because I was planning on going to Chicago or New York um after graduating at some point and so I for sure was not looking for a relationship. <laughs> that well, is the point. When we first started talking, you said you just wanted a fling. I was like, I want a fling. Yeah. Yeah. How did that make you feel? I was like, no. No. That's, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Yeah. Um, and so after we'd been hanging out, it had kind of been like us and a friend that always would hang out together mm-hmm. for like three months, probably. Mm-hmm. I remember us having a conversation. I think we were walking outside. I remember walking outside and it was cold. And you said, so. I don't remember your wording, but you're like, so. Like, have you thought about, it? like, would you want to actually be, like, boyfriend and girlfriend? I remember you asked me that. Do you remember that? I don't remember walking outside. I, we, it was outside and it was cold, and I feel like we were walking from Kelly and Renee's house to my house in that block. Oh, And yeah. I said, I, re- I don't remember exactly the wording, but I had said, yeah, I think that'd be all right. Or, yeah, like, I'm not just in it for <laughs> fling anymore. No, it was back from Jenna's house, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Either way, we were walking, like, to my house in the cold. It would have been, like, December probably or January. Mm-hmm. No, it would have been December. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then you asked me to be your girlfriend on January 1st. Um, we went to a church lock-in, and it was after that. So it was, like, the lock-in started on the 31st, but you asked me on January 1st. Right. Um, and you thought we were already girlfriend and boyfriend. 
Yeah. <laughs> There tell was them, a little miscommunication. Yeah, tell them why you thought that. Well, because I asked you, and then you said, yeah, and so I thought that was that. You just I, thought we were dating. I thought that meant that we were dating. And then but I had made some comment to you. About we how I hadn't asked yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you were like, oh, you told me this later, that yeah. he's like, oh, I guess I have to ask then. I had to be more direct, I guess. Yeah, because in today's age, today's day and age, you aren't just like, you like, there's a specific point that it's official. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, back in the day, I feel like it was like, oh, you guys are hanging out like you're dating. Yeah. You know? Or, like, whatever they called it back then. Yeah, but you were more old-fashioned Yeah, that. I was for sure. And then it became Facebook official after that. I wasn't old-fashioned about it. Yeah, you made me ask directly. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. But I'm just saying, back in the day, I feel like if you were hanging out, it was considered, like, official. Yeah. But I, just, I, I don't know. I remember. I remember when it became Facebook official, and it was a really big deal. Yeah, everyone, like, f- freaks out and yeah. comments on your post. You yeah. guys know high school. Um, okay, so, fast forward, when did you know that, that you were going to marry me? When did I know? Yeah, when did you know? I feel like it was pretty early. I'd say, like, when we first started talking, I thought this could be. This could be it? This could be it, but it wasn't, like, a for sure. Yeah. Like, it, obviously, it took a little while longer. Mm-hmm. Before I was like, yep. Maybe that summer. That summer? Yeah. That's what I wrote down. I wrote down, I remember it being exactly like six months. Yeah. April, May, maybe five months. Um, I was really big into journaling at the time, and I remember I wrote a journal letter. I think I might have given it to you about the day, that, like, that I realized, like, that you were the one and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one night we were, like, sitting and talking on your trampoline, and you were like, I'm ready to marry you right now. And then that, like, scared me because I was like, Oh. <laughs> what? Yeah. You I guys, don't... this is the first time hearing of this. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was when you were, like, thinking about going to Europe and stuff, and I was like... <laughs> SOS. Sorry, guys. Had a minor issue, but keep going. Anyways. <laughs> but, yeah. And then you were like, yeah, I'd be ready to marry you right now. And you were scared? Yeah, because I wasn't. Were you going to, like, break up with me? No. You were just like, wow, that was fast or whatever. I was like, yeah, I guess she's committed. I guess she's committed. <laughs> Things are moving fast because at first I told you when we very first started talking, I told him I didn't want to get married till I was like older. Or you said you didn't want to get married at all. Oh yeah, I did. I told you guys I was very happy with being single at the time. Yeah. And I also at that time was thinking like no kids or like one. <laughs> yeah. Um. So things have changed a lot. And I knew like right away like I want to get married someday. I want to have kids someday. Yeah. Like. Um. So well, that changed things. One a lot. of the questions we get asked a lot. It's really funny because people will like. Like, it'll happen at, like, work, or it's happened, like, at Bible study before people will be like, okay, so when do you guys want to have kids? And they're, like, <laughs> nervous to ask it, because, like, I had someone ask me the other day if we were trying. Really? I don't remember who it was, but I was like, absolutely not. No. Like, just because we're married doesn't mean we want children. But that's such a cultural thing now. You get right. married, you have kids right away. Yeah. So, um, maybe we should tell them how long it, we want it to be before we have kids. A long time. We're thinking, like, five years from now. Yeah. I guess if we have any kids sooner than that people know you guys know that that was an oops that was not meant to be (laughs) and how many kids do you want to have Mm, probably four yeah that's kind of the number we've settled on but we go back and forth between like four and five yeah um one thing we want to do is four and adopt so we've always said like either have three of our own and adopt one or have four of our own and adopt Mm -hmm. one or who knows we'll see Mm -hmm. um okay so yeah, we decided that summer, we both kind of were like, that summer was like so like madly in love summer. Mm-hmm. I remember us just being like head over heels for that one another. That was the honeymoon. That was the honeymoon stage. Yeah. Um, and then um, I graduated, yep, I graduated and then it was the summertime and then I stayed here for a year and um, you guys can hear about more of that in one of our first episodes. And then we both- Like your, your gap year? Yeah, my gap year. Yeah, but you stayed in Gettysburg. You stayed in Gettysburg, instead yes. Instead of going to school. Yes, instead of going yes. to school. Long story, but if you listen to our very first very first episode of the podcast, you guys will get that whole story because that was a whole nother, whole nother <laughs> story. Okay, um, and so then we both decided on South Dakota State University, um, Brookings, South Dakota, which is where we're at right now recording this. Mm-hmm. And um, then you asked to marry me. Um, your freshman year of college, it was kind of my yeah. freshman year too. Like I had taken some online classes, but both of our first year on campus. It's pretty crazy to look back at. Now. Yeah. Cause you see freshmen on campus and you're like, 
they can't get married. Oh my gosh, they look like babies. Yeah, and then it's like, we did that. Like, uh, how nuts is that? Another thing I was thinking about was, um, like, we had talked about getting married before school even started. Do you remember that kind of? Mm-hmm. We had contemplated it, and then we're like, we should live in the dorms first. Do one year in the dorms on our own. Yeah. But you were, like, when I asked you, I felt like you were expecting it. Like, you knew it was coming. When you asked me that night? Or what do you mean? Yeah, then, well, The night you proposed? You knew it was coming over, like, winter break or whatever. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm very much a planner. So I was like, okay, we need to have the engagement six months out because we need six months to plan it. Um, this, that, and that. Like, I was very, like... What would you have done if I didn't, if well, I didn't, I didn't ask Well, you? I, was, I was convinced you weren't asking me yeah. at that point. Would he you have told been upset, me, though? No, I don't think so. As oh. long as it was coming, like, in the next month. <laughs> <laughs> but what if, well, like, it's what I'm saying. Like, if I didn't ask you in that month. Well, you asked me December 27th, right? I'm not even sure. Yeah, I think it was the 27th. Um, and so, like, if it wouldn't have happened in Jan- December or January, I might have been like, excuse me, sir. Like, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> like. Yeah. Um, but he convinced me he didn't have the ring and, like, that it wasn't happening over Christmas <laughs> break. So I didn't think it was. Yeah. And. Oh, yeah. That's another thing is that you picked out your ring. Yeah, I did. So, like, that's how much, like, you knew it was coming. Yeah. Like, we were very, like what's the word set on this happening yeah. like this was like our plan um but yeah i picked out my ring it means we were broke i picked out like the cheapest one there was but it was the one you liked no i, I it's so pretty you it's didn't even stinky. look at the price like you just saw it was the one you liked right and, and then we looked at the price it turned out to be like the cheapest one yeah yeah um so that was a that's great news didn't that was have, a win-win didn't have to take me. out a loan for the ring yeah we were able to pay it out of pocket yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and so he asked me We'll just do a quick, quick story. We were actually parked um, down by the river at Bob's. It was like negative degrees outside. Mm -hmm. And we opened each other's, we had just got done with supper. um, And we had opened each other's presents, uh, Christmas presents to one another. Anniversary. Right? No? No, it was Christmas presents. Christmas presents? Yep. Yeah. And yeah, that makes sense. And you had given me a camera bag, and so I secretly looked through, like, every little, like, oh. slot <laughs> and hole in it, because I was like, there's a ring in here. <laughs> and... Then, after we were all done with it, like, we were about to leave you guys. Like, about to, like, drive away. And I was like, you know what, Rady? Like, I thought you were going to ask me tonight and all this stuff. And he's like, no. And he thought it was so funny. And was like, Cameron, I don't even have the ring with me. Like, it's not in Gettysburg. Like, I don't even have it. Like, you yeah. might have told me you hadn't even bought it yet. Like, I, I don't know. It, yeah. yeah. And then, like, five minutes after us talking and laughing about this, and, like, I thought we were going to go home, he's like, but I do have one more present for you in the trunk. Um, so you should come back here with me. And it crossed my mind. I was like, it's going to happen. But I was like, but he just told me it isn't going to happen. I was like, but it's going to happen. Like, I just kept going back and forth in about, like, 10 seconds. It took us to walk back there. Yeah. And then you reached in, and you, like, got down on one knee and asked me. Couldn't even, like, see it because it was so dark. Yeah. It was, like, black. And I, like, fell to the ground because I was excited, you guys. Like, <laughs> not because I fell. I literally just, like, I've never felt that kind of joy in my life. I don't yeah. think. Maybe our wedding day. And I had you pretty well convinced that it wasn't Yeah, so happen. it was, like, so confusing, but, like, I don't know. So, that's a quick um, getting you guys caught up. Um, and then we studied abroad. Uh, so, we got married then July 28th. So, we planned. We lived at home that summer. And then we lived in Gettysburg for a month. And then we flew off to England. Mm-hmm. Studied abroad for three and a half months. Traveled to, like, around 11 countries or something. 11, um, yeah. And people often refer to this, they're like, oh, that was like a honeymoon stage for you guys. That's not a honeymoon. It was absolutely not a honeymoon at all. It was actually kind of like hard on our marriage, I think. Not like, it was like good learning, but it wasn't like easy at all. Like people say the first few months is like bliss. It was not bliss. It would have been easy if we had more money. Yeah. (laughs) And could travel a little more luxurious. Yeah, we did everything on a budget. really, really cheap. Yeah, really budget. Stayed in some really horrible Airbnbs. Yeah. The cats. Yeah, the cats. Refer, refer back to another episode. Yeah. <laughs> the, tr- the travel horror stories episode, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was really hard. The um, apartment we lived in, there was mold and mm-hmm. mice and very, like, black mold was growing on the ceiling above where we slept and we could visually see it. Um, um, British people are mean. Yeah, Brits are not the nicest. <laughs> but it might have been Manchester because yeah. I've also been told Manchester is the armpit of England, so... Don't recommend. <laughs> um, okay, where are we at? Are, are we are we pretty much there? Yeah, I, I studied that, abroad our sophomore year. Yes, and then got came an back. To, came back to SDSU. We yeah. got 
a better apartment than we had in Manchester, but still not the nicest in the world. But it is way better than Manchester. Way better than Manchester. So thankful for it. We used to have a laundry room that's half decent. Uh, that's half decent, yes. But, um, yeah, and then back to now, I guess. So we've been living in Brookings a little over a year. And, mm-hmm. wow, that's really crazy to think we've been here that like long. full-time, yeah. Um, we have one more year of school left, ne- so we have next year left, but I think we both are going to have it pretty easy load. Mm-hmm. Like, my last semester, I take, like, one class, I think. Yeah. And then we have plans this summer. I don't know if I've told you guys on the podcast yet, but Brady and I are moving to Minneapolis for the summer. Mm-hmm. So we're really excited for that. Um, excited to do some exploring Tell of the why. city. Why? For your internship. Oh, oh, I thought you meant why we're excited to do exploring. Oh, no. <laughs> I like, I don't know why. why. we're moving. Um, yeah, we're moving because I have an internship with the boutique I work at now, Primp, um, in the cities, and Brady's already t- had an internship, so his isn't, like, he doesn't, like, need one, but he is probably going to have one this summer also, yeah. so that's why I've applied for a few. Yeah, he's applied for we'll a few. We'll see. Be praying. So, yeah, everyone pray for Brady's internship. Maybe if all <laughs> of our listeners pray, it'll happen. Yeah, maybe. Um, okay, so I think we're just going to jump into pros and cons of... I guess being being married in general and also being married young and also being married like in college, just kind yeah. of everything. Um, okay, it seems you, like we have a lot more cons than pros. Cameron was really rattling off the cons oh, because, we this. because we had a bunch of pros <laughs> and I was like, we need to give them cons too. <laughs> the cons came a lot more easy for you. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so you tell them our first pro. Well, we get to live together. Um, I'd say like with people we grew up with or especially you um people don't live together before they're married Mm -hmm. um so yeah we get to live together and enjoy life together yeah i think he's saying like that like the way i grew up and was raised is you don't live together you don't live together before you're married um so just like getting to actually do that with one another from a really young age has been so fun Mm -hmm. (laughs) so interesting Mm -hmm. (laughs) the things (laughs) that happen I'm just thinking about some of your, like, cooking and everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, another pro, then, is also that we get to spend more time together. So, one thing, like, when you're... This is, like, honestly one of my favorite things about being married is when you're dating, it's, like, you go along... You go about your day. You do your job. You do whatever. You go to school. And it's, like, then you actually spend together in the evening like three hours you know and then you leave and you go and then you go about your your way and your day again and like then you get to see each other again maybe the next day for three hours Mm -hmm. if you even get to see each other the next day so my favorite part is like we're just always together like we wake up together um lots of times we get to have lunch together or supper or breakfast or all three or you never know get to have like a meal together um why'd you make a face i just didn't know if i was making noise oh he's drinking a smoothie right now (laughs) we just got back from the gym and we're like okay, we need to record this now because it goes live in, like, two hours. So, guys, this is fresh. Fresh off the press. Uh-huh. Um, I don't even know where I was at now. You sorry. distracted me with your smoothie. I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah, going about our day. So we just get – you get to see each other so much more. And my favorite thing is going to bed, snuggling, and feeling, like, safe next to you and waking up with you, except for when I have to wake up before you. That's really sad. Yeah, you got the early morning shifts. Early morning shifts. Yeah. Um, so that's another pro. And then – why don't you tell them the next one? Well, you just said that. Spend more time together. No, the next oh, one. Oh, know each other better? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just... <laughs> when you spend so much time in a small apartment together, you get to know each other pretty well, mm-hmm. pretty quick. Especially with, like, Manchester. We were with each other all the time because we walked to school together a mile and a half to school in the rain every day. You can imagine the arguments that there yeah. were. Yeah. Especially when we had one umbrella and Brady would hold it above his head and not mine. <laughs> or when you would hold it and then Still get salty. It caught in the wind and it'd break. And we'd get so hangry. Yeah. Or we'd have somebody come up on the street and threaten yeah. to stab us with a knife. It's fine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of homeless drug addicts. Okay, anyways. <laughs> anyways, I digress. Yeah, um, just get to knowing each other at a deeper level. Yeah. A more emotional and more of an intimate level. Mm-hmm. Um... And then also all of, which we've kind of been talking about, but all of the traveling and adventuring we get to do together. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got to go to all of those countries we went to, neither of us had been to before. No. So it was really, I hadn't traveled out of the country You before. hadn't traveled out of the country. So it was yeah. really cool to see each other's, like, reactions and see the way that your, like, spouse or, 
I guess for anyone, like your significant other, the way they react to like a new place was just really magical. When you learn to like trust each other, like for sure, like you planned the whole trips and I just like trusted that you had the right Airbnb, the right flights. And yeah, you did. And we just went along with it. And then if something was messed up, we dealt with it together. Yeah. Yeah. I was the planning. I'd have, I'd figure out exactly where we were going to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd figure out where we were going to eat, what sites we were going to see each day. Um, and then Brady was all the transportation. So, well, I did the flights, but he did like the trains, the buses and props to him because that is stuff is hard. It's stressful. That stuff it is be. hard to do because yeah. each country you go to, you'd have like the navigation figured out in one country and then you go to a new country and it's completely different completely, in yeah. another language with another currency. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were doing that and lots of times we were gone every weekend to a new place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was intense. Yeah. But I miss it. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> miss it a lot. Um, and then Brady added Dash to our travel and adventure pro, Dash Coffee Shops. Yep. That's kind of our thing. We like to explore new coffee shops together. We love not only the coffee, but I think, at least for me, I love, like, the ambiance of coffee shops Mm -hmm. and the culture of coffee shops. Um, It's kind of the one thing we spend extra money on is coffee. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, we... We don't really see an issue as buying a five dollar coffee, no. <laughs> which I know sounds ridiculous, and some people are like, "Really?" Um, but we don't do it every day. No, we don't at all. And I mean, I work at a coffee shop now, so I'll like get to drink those coffees at work a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I also get like um, some free beans, and I get discounted beans. So like, well, we've been really big into making all different versions of coffee at home. Mm-hmm. That's been our really big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're going to a new yeah, city or we're a going new somewhere state, where you or, won't be there again. Yeah, yeah, we for sure are gonna spend the money on the coffee shop. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so then the next one we have down is we just love that we're getting to spend all this time together before we have kids. Mm-hmm. Um. I know that this is what some people want and that is totally fine. But for me, like I would never want to have kids right after getting married. And some people, that's just all they want is just to have kids right away. And for me, I'm like, I want more than even two years. Like I said, we've been married almost two years and we still want like another five or no kids. Yeah. So it's just been really, it's worked out really well that we got married so young because we get all that time Mm -hmm. together before we do have kids. And so we both agree on that. And that's just been fabulous. And we want to do, we have uh, like a year and a a little less than a half so like i'm just gonna say like a year left of school and so we're kind of hoping to have a little bit money a little bit of money to travel again um do some bigger trips again before we have kids so for sure hoping hoping for that Mm -hmm. and then we get to make decisions together about the future and our money yeah so i guess do you want to tell them why this is important why we think this is important so like like you mean just how like why this is a pro that we're doing this together yeah i mean if you don't kind of combine or like talk with each other about your finances before you get married or um like i guess i gave cameron the example when we were talking before like if we weren't together that i'd be spending a lot more money on hunting and guns and things that i like and enjoy and i wouldn't see an issue with spending two hundred dollars on the pair of shoes i currently want right now right but brady was there to be like "Mm, no you actually can't buy those those. yeah (laughs) yeah and so we make better decisions with our money because it's not just my money that's affecting me it's affecting both of us now right um which we don't get as many things that we want but at the same time we're a little bit smarter with our money yeah i mean i think that we're also we don't get as many things as we want, but I think we're smarter worth the money, and I think we're going to be better off in the long run. Mm-hmm. Because um, right now, Brady and I um, don't have any college debt, so mm-hmm. we've just been paying it as we go. Um, and when you get married, then it's just your money that you are relying on. Like you don't have to put your money, your parents' right. money down or anything. Right. Um, so we are literally just paying for everything out of pocket and we have a really low income. So, I mean, we do get to see a little bit of financial aid. So that's been really like helpful and Mm -hmm. a blessing. So, um, yeah, but for sure, if I didn't have you, I would spend more money on stuff. I should not be spending money on. And then I wouldn't have money to fix my car probably, or, you know, like those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Cause I just think, Oh, there it is. going to spend it. Yeah. And you'd go out more, you would eat out more. Right. Yeah, for sure. Which I've always kind of been smart with money. Like, it's something that my parents were really good about teaching me. I've never me. really spent money. Yeah, myself. Brady's not a spender. I'm, a, I'm the spender in the relationship. I'm a saver. But I I have a budget. So yeah. I'm really good with budgeting. But, but we've helped each other out. But, you've, yeah. You've told me to buy things when I'm like, ah, oh, I probably don't need it. I'm and like, then, okay, you need a new shirt, dress shirt. Yeah. Like, the, 
you've been wearing the same ones for five yeah. years. <laughs> but then I've stopped you from buying stuff. Too. Yeah. You're like, do you really need that? And I'm like, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also put down that we can look at like the whole financial issue or the whole finan- finances as a negative too, mm-hmm. because uh, one of the highest reasons for divorce um, is because of finances. It causes a lot of like divorces. It causes a lot of stress. Um, mm-hmm. And that with marriage, and I want to say, like, it does add a lot of stress. Like, I've probably cried oh, some. Sure. I've yeah. probably cried some tears. We've had a few fights um, about not having enough money, and it's not really like the other one went and spent the money they shouldn't spend. That hasn't right. been an issue. It's just the money of we literally don't have enough money to pay our rent right now. What are we going yeah, to do? Yeah, it's never like we're never really mad at each other. No, it's not like either of us have gone and done anything to mess it up. Right. We just don't have enough. Right. And, um. So, well, especially, like, during school when you're only working, t- like, half-time, part-time. Right. I, yeah. I actually wrote that down. So, we each work around 20 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And so, if you think about it, we're making, we're working 40 hours a week for both of us. So, it's like we're living off one person's income for two people. And so, we have a two-bedroom right. apartment right now. Um, and so... And entry-level jobs. And entry-level <laughs> yeah. jobs. Yeah. And so, we're making, like, $1,600 a month. Mm-hmm. And uh, between... I'd say like 800, 800, 50% of our income goes towards our rent and like our electricity bill. Yeah. So after that, um, we're living for, we have groceries, um, any medicine you need to buy, the bare necessities, uh, gas money. Um, yeah, gas is a big one. Seems like there's always other bills coming. I'm like, where did this come from? Like a yeah. doctor bill or like I said, medicine. It's like every three months I'm picking up prescriptions and I have to buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so afterwards we have like no... Um, what's it called when you have extra money? Like expendable yeah, income? Yeah, we have no expendable income. Yeah. So that's just really difficult. And it's like when people ask us to like go do something with them, it's really hard. And we'll have to sit there and talk about it like, okay, do we actually go do, do this? Should we actually spend the money on eating out? But then sometimes we're like, well, we need to be social and like do things with people. So we mm-hmm. do. But like just like that, that has been really hard. Um, But I guess along that line, my financial advice for anyone who is – anywhere in life, but especially like newlyweds and stuff is to have a budget, Mm -hmm. figure out how much you guys make about and figure out, um, what your budget should be. Yeah. And And we've even used like a couple apps and stuff. Yeah. Right now I think we use good budget Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, figure out how much you should be spending in each area every month. And, um, then you can each go put and put in how much you've spent Mm -hmm. and then it like it, Brady's will be like refreshed or will like sync with my what I put so then he can see like exactly how much money we have you mm-hmm. know so that has been really really good for us and that way you can keep your separate debit accounts too yeah so we right now have separate debit debit card accounts yeah. and it's not necessarily like we wanted to do that but long story short we've lost our marriage license <laughs> <laughs> so I cannot change my last name to swear on my um bank account so therefore we cannot combine our bank accounts <laughs> and you have to pay to get a new marriage license so we are currently hoping it shows it yeah, shows it'll up. Show up it'll eventually. show up eventually so we have currently have separate debit accounts but that was what why that happened yeah. not because we wanted it to but it actually has been kind of nice been right, yeah because yeah, you cannot buy a present for the other one like i pay the credit card bill yeah. And so, like, I see every transaction that's on there. So he'd mm-hmm. never be able to buy me, order me anything. Right. Without that. And I know everything he buys. He's not, we're not secretly buying things. Yeah, I never hide it back. So, yeah, I guess our financial advice is to make a budget. Mm-hmm. Um, living off $1,600 a month is possible. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it is also a stress and it all, is also a con because we are in school and things are so tight. Uh, but we've learned how to buy really cheap groceries. Yes. We just got back from the grocery store and we did pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Buy a lot of frozen food. Got a little more expensive. Yeah. But... It was a little more expensive than we wanted. But there, I mean, all Because these... Brady thought he needed deodorant. Yeah. How dare I? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also taught us a lot of skills mm-hmm. too. And yeah. I'm not complaining at all. No. Buy the frozen, right. buy the frozen um, fruits and vegetables versus the fresh. Well, speaking of cons, Cameron. What? Should we talk about some cons? Sure. Look at that segue. That was perfect. perfect. Brady's meant for this podcasting uh-huh. life. I'm good at this. I might just take it over. Hi, this is Brady Swear, yeah. Coffee and a Combo Podcast. Uh-huh. It's mine now. <laughs> I am the captain now. I am the captain now. Anyways, um, do you want to talk about it? You want me to talk about the first one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So our first one that we had written down is that it's harder to make friends. It um, is. Yeah. Why? 
Why because is it harder? <laughs> <laughs> everybody who's our age isn't in a relationship like ours. And so it makes it harder to relate, I think. And people just assume you've got stuff to do. Like, um, you can talk about that a little more, yeah, too. Yeah, so uh, there's been, like, a few times that, like, people are going to go do something or whatever. And it's, like, they just don't even ask me because they assume that I'm, like, busy with, like, married life. Yeah. And it's, like, okay, like, I can have friends, too. Like, I yeah. want to go do things, too. Like, I don't know. It's just, I, I think that it's... And I... It's hard to say because, like, if I wasn't married, I'd probably be the same way. But I've also heard a couple other um, people talk about this that are married that people just kind of assume that they don't want to be invited to things because they're, like, the rest of them are single and they're married. And it's like, no, like, you still want to be their friend. You still want to go do things with them. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can't have a relationship with um, your single group of friends or whatever. Right. Well, and we've been together long enough where... It's okay if you want to go do something. Like, go yeah, do it, you right. know? We're not, like, still on the puppy dog love stage yeah. where it's like, I need to spend, spend every, every moment. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's also, that's really hard. And then we're also, like, not on campus as much. And we didn't, like, get an apartment yeah. with, like, people our age and, like, of the same, like, gender. Like, I didn't get an apartment with a bunch of friends, you know? Right. And you didn't get an apartment with a bunch of friends. And so it's, like, we didn't have that way of, like, meeting and making friends in college. Mm -hmm. But also, like... It, you can also look at it as a blessing because I, like, we're really good roommates, you know? Like, mm -hmm. people have horror roommate stories and all sorts of issues with that, too. So, I mean, you can always look at the other side of it, too, but we're just trying to point out some cons also. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, making friends is, is hard. Like, or we go to church or we go to activities, like, together. So then it's like, oh, there's all these girls over here hanging out and all these boys over here hanging out. And it's like, well, do we break apart or, like, what do we do here? You know? Right. It's just hard. It's because, like, we want to go – I don't know. It's hard. So a couple friends are amazing. And we're finally – not finally, but we're starting to have some yeah. friends like, in serious relationships. And it is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> just so nice. It's refreshing. It's very refreshing for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. Another con – is that we're both still growing and maturing. Um, we got married before we both really knew who we were as individuals. Um, and we're both learning and we're, I mean, obviously we're in school still. So we don't, neither of us really know what we want to do with our lives, what occupation we want to have. Um, so yeah, we're still growing. Mm-hmm. And maturing too. Like, Which everybody is at yeah, any stage for sure. in life. Mm -hmm. but. Um, I think the maturing thing is huge too. Like, they talk about, like, learning how to do adult things and, like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, like, this is adulting. And it's, right. like, we were literally thrown into that, like, together. Mm -hmm. Like, learning how to, like, pay, do your taxes and learning how to fly across the country and, like, book right. plane tickets and, like, all this stuff. And it – one thing that I said was really nice – Sorry, I'm kind of getting off of this a bit, but one thing that was really nice about going to Manchester is I'd never change it for anything because our parents were all the way across the world and they couldn't just hop in and help us with right. anything. We had to figure out how to do all that stuff on our own, and I think it's made us um, into the independent people that we are now. Yeah. And sure, our parents do step in and help us, and that's oh, yeah. awesome, and we love it. Mm -hmm. But um, we are able to do life on our own, and we're not just calling them with everything, you know? Like, right. it taught us to rely on each other, which is what a marriage is about. You shouldn't be relying on your parents. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so that's been really nice. But yeah, the whole the whole point of that was that yeah, maturing and learning and growing um is has been kind of hard. Yeah, but it's and we're still good. at the age where a lot of kids live with their parents in the summer. For sure, stuff, yeah, and their parents know? still like like I'm just thinking about like doing your FAFSA. Like, yeah, we, we had to learn how to do our FAFSA, and we're like, oh my gosh, how do you do this? <laughs> like, yeah, we're doing everything. I don't know taxes and yeah, so which is a good thing. We're not. It's a pro and a con. But yeah, I wouldn't complain if. For those of you who are your parents still do that stuff for you, don't take it for granted. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And then another one is um, we – oh, we kind of already – no, we didn't say this one yet. We um, don't really – didn't really get a lot of time or currently don't really get a lot of time to figure out what we enjoy and, like, build on our hobbies. Mm -hmm. So all of the extra time, all of our extra time that we have in a day or in a week or whatever is spent doing housework, paying the bills, um, keeping up with school – I mean, meal prepping and picking up the kitchen is, like, a full-time job, I feel. <laughs> I clean up the kitchen, like, twice a day. Yeah, and so I'm sure you I. feel that, yeah. too. Yeah. So the kitchen's being cleaned up, like, four times a day. I mean, doing the laundry takes, like, a day in itself, it seems yeah. like. So we just don't really have time to go, like, you don't have time to go hunting, you were saying earlier. Right. Like, you haven't had time to build on that hobby. Mm-hmm. 
And, I mean, there's things that I would love to do, but I don't have time to do them. Right. So. Yeah, there's a lot of hobbies that, you know, if we didn't get married young, that we probably would have done a lot more of. Right. Yeah. But we're also, like, hopefully hopefully once we graduate, we're looking forward to being able to do those things more. Yeah, having a little more free time. Because college is crazy when you're working and you're married. and Yeah. Not a lot of extra time. Which is also why it can be hard to have friendships. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep up with them. And you got so much else going on. Yeah. And it's like sometimes you want to do something with someone, but by the end of the day, you're so tired, you're like, never mind. Yeah. Been so, working since 5.30 and mm-hmm. want to go to bed. Yeah. That's yeah. me. <laughs> um, and there's that one. Do you want any that one? What? Like being married in school? Oh, yeah. I guess we well, kind we of already, already talked yeah, about it. Yeah, we just talked yeah, about that. Never mind. We talked about it already, guys. <laughs> okay. So moving right into what our advice is. Which I think this is so funny. This is funny. That we're giving advice. We've been married a year and a half. But yeah. hey, everyone has things to learn and everyone has advice to give. So yeah. here we go. Um, the very first one that I have written down was communication. And anyone who ever asks me like advice on a relationship, like dating relationship, and something Brady and I always talk about is communication is key. Mm-hmm. And... Like, we just had, a, like, a little bit of a, a mini argument this earlier this morning. Like, he was upset about something that I didn't even know he was upset about. And then you told me, like, a couple hours later, and, like, I didn't even know that that upset you until you told me that. Mm-hmm. So you just have to talk to your person and tell them. And Brady and I are, like, over-talkers. Like, we'll apologize. This happened today. Like, he apologized for the situation, and then I apologized. But then we weren't good yet. Yeah. We had to go talk about what happened, why it made us feel that way, what we should have done better, like... We talk so much. It's crazy but good. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have anything else to add on communication? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. Got, you got it pretty Yeah. Good. No. No. Um, tell them the next one. The next piece of advice. Show the other the way you love to be loved. You like to be loved. You like to be loved. Yeah. Do you want to expand? <laughs> You guys, he just like looks at me like, okay, okay your turn your now. Turn. You you, talk you're, this is your podcast. Yeah. You you can take it. I'm away. the guest. You're supposed to. So drive if you the guys think if you guys think that I've been talking a lot, don't worry. He's been <laughs> wanting it like this. Yeah, I haven't been okay. cutting him off. Um, show the other way they like to be loved. So, so yours is like gifts. Like you like. I like gifts, gifts. and like quality time. Mm-hmm. Tell them what you did for me this Valentine's Day. So there's this, like um. This meal, German. this meal that yeah. Cameron's mom makes, I guess is really difficult, and I didn't necessarily know that. You didn't but know? <laughs> I just thought it was... So I asked Cameron, like, what her favorite food was, and it was Varenica, which is this meal. And um, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to make it. And so then I called Cameron's mom, like, how do I do this? She sent me the recipe, and I didn't realize how much of a process it was <laughs> and how nobody thought I could do it, but nobody told me that. Yeah, and, my dad, like, <laughs> could not believe it. Yeah. He's like, why would he even try to do that? Yeah. Nobody, That's what he told my mom. <laughs> nobody believed I could do it. Um, also, yes. my mom said that she told you it would take an hour. Yeah. I told my mom, I was like, it took him three hours. Yeah, it took me a long time. <laughs> Which, yeah. Oh, well, I did it. And so I surprised Cameron with that. And then Cameron's first reaction was, did you freeze my mom's and bring it here? Yeah, I thought my mom sent... So the, what it is, is it's like little cheese yeah. pockets things, and then you put gravy over them. Mm-hmm. And my mom will freeze them when she makes a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. So I thought my mom, because we had just been home a week before that, I thought my mom had sent frozen Varenica with him, yeah. and he had like warmed them up. Because <laughs> they look just like hers. Like, he, you even had the little like fork edges on the mm-hmm. side, the way she presses hers mm-hmm. uh, together. It was amazing. I stood there in, like, awe for, like... It took me, like, a minute for you to convince me, I think. Yeah. Going through... You did not believe that I made No. It... Oh, my gosh. But I guess if it was frozen, I don't know how it took you three hours to make it. Yeah. And then for dessert... But you took a nap for all of it. Yeah, I accidentally fell asleep for the whole time. (laughs) Um, And then he came out with dessert... And he made me chocolate-covered strawberries. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you can buy those from the store. That's what I kept thinking about. Did you know you can just buy those already done? No. Oh. 
Well, you can. Oh, that would have been easier. No, but I'm glad you did it. <laughs> it shows how much you love me. But, so, like, for me, the whole point of this is, like, gifts is, like, one of my love languages, but it doesn't have to be, like, a gift. Like, that right there. And mm-hmm. quality time. Like, those are, like, my yeah, love Yeah, like, gifts don't have to be expensive. Mm-hmm. Like, yours is, like, a little note on the mirror. Yeah. Things like that. And you left me notes all over the house on Valentine's Day. Because you worked early in the morning, mm-hmm. so I made your breakfast for you and everything. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. so sweet. Um, and your one of your love languages is touch. And mm-hmm. so, like, today, you were like, was it today or yesterday? You're like, I need to feel like you love me. <laughs> I, like, came, it must have been, like, yesterday, as after I got home from work. And I just went, like, straight to the floor, to the floor, to paint my nails. I was sitting on the floor painting my nails. And you're like, you haven't hugged me or kissed me or touched me since you got home. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. He's just very much of a toucher. He needs to feel loved that way so mm-hmm. that's like your love language but anyways just make sure you show that your person their love language because you may be thinking that you're showing them their, your love language like i think that first like would, like i like to be touched too but like you touch me and show me your love language to me but i'm like but that's not my love language yeah like that's not gonna work buddy, buddy. <laughs> you know that's that's not gonna work it's not gonna work bro chacho bro chacho okay and then <laughs> uh the next one is respect yes you have it all capsed all That's capitalized. An important one. It is. Um, you just need to respect the other person's opinion and the way they do things, their thoughts on life, on life, on mm-hmm. anything. Um, sometimes Cameron's thoughts can be pretty funny. What do you mean? <laughs> just, just sometimes the way you look at things are, it's pretty hilarious. Oh. And, so, and sometimes I laugh at it, but then you're like, I'm serious. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's like so funny that it. Doesn't seem serious. Oh god! Then you get mad at me for laughing at it. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that's really stuck out to me that they said in marriage counseling was, um, I'm trying to remember the exact wording of this. You, it's like the other person's feelings may be hurt, and you don't understand why they're hurt, and so like you're like whatever, like your feelings should be hurt, but. It, the fact still remains that their that their feelings were hurt and that they feel hurt from what you said mm-hmm. and like it doesn't matter what you think that's still how they feel so like pretty much you need to like figure it out and you mm-hmm. need to like you need to be um compassionate towards the fact that they feel that way even if like what you said even if what you said wasn't meant that way they still took it like that and they still feel that way and they can't change the fact that they feel that way you know so like yeah you didn't mean it for like that but now you need to like you need to f- try to understand how they're feeling, you know? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I, I don't think I'm explaining it. Like, you have to try to see from the other person's point yeah. of view. And even if you can't understand where they're coming from, you still need need to. <laughs> <laughs> you still need to. <laughs> yeah, you still need to understand what they're thinking, yeah. what's going on in their mind. Like, if they say that they feel hurt and, like, what you said was the worst thing they've ever heard or something like that. Yeah. You need to get to that. You need to be like, oh my gosh, they feel that way. Like I need to be compassionate and I need to try to like love on them or do whatever it takes to make them feel better. Or, you know, like even if you don't think what you said, like sometimes I'll say something and Brady was like, well, I took it like this. And I'm like, okay, but that's not how I meant it. It The fact still remains that he still feels hurt by it, you mm-hmm. know, even if that's not what I meant. So I still need to be like, okay, he still feels hurt by this. I can't change the fact by being like, sorry, that's not what I meant. He's still going to feel that way. So I need to apologize and like figure out what I did or, you know, just accept the fact that what I did was wrong or whatever. Um, so that has just really stuck with me because lots of times I'll be like, well, that's not what I meant. And it's like, it doesn't matter. He still feels that way. So I need to figure it out pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Should we read one of our cards? Yes. So for Valentine's Day, my parents got us this box of um, cards that's for couples. And there's probably, there's like hundreds of cards with questions. Excuse me, sir. What? We were supposed to randomly draw the cards. I did I, just randomly draw. You read them. Yeah, now I read them. Well, I don't even know what they say. They were random. <laughs> well, we're drawing cards randomly, but he already <laughs> read them. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I, we can draw new ones, but these are pretty good, I think. Okay, so Brady has a couple cards. I will still I draw know. ones to ask you, though. I hope you know that's coming. Oh. So okay. he has a couple cards drawn. He's going to ask me the questions. I don't know what they are. This is going to be interesting. Okay, go. All right. What do you envy... About the opposite sex. Like in general or just about you? In general. Like that what they, do you That they don't them? have to um, ha- give birth to babies. Hmm. That they don't have to go through childbirth. 
This is true. Because I haven't done it yet, but I imagine I've heard it is the worst thing on the planet. I've heard it's not as bad as getting kicked in the balls. What? Do not <laughs> even start. That's what I've heard. No. Giving birth Science. is so much worse than getting kicked in the balls. Well, we'll never know. Whatever. Okay. What's the next one? Um, is passion or comfort more important in a relationship? Passion. Why? Because you're not always going to be comfortable. I was just thinking about when we were in Manchester. I was not comfortable. True. But we had passion. And we were able to drive, be driven off of our passion for one another and our love for one another and our passion for seeing new places. Traveling. And let me tell you, the trains and the Airbnbs and where we literally lived was not comfortable. No. And I don't think I'd want to be living comfortably. I don't like... Yeah, if you're not comfortable, you're not growing. You mean, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, you said that, right? Yeah. Okay. It took me a second. Did you want to answer those ones or do you, can I draw random ones? You can draw random ones. Okay. Okay. This is a good <laughs> one. <laughs> it's like, I okay. just saw it. What's the dumbest argument we ever had? Oh, man. I don't know. Can you think of any? This is you. Well, yeah, but help um, me out. Okay, don't do... It doesn't have to be like ever had. What's just one d- dumb argument? You can throw me under the bus if you have to. Mm, well, all the dumb arguments are your fault. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Talk towards me. I don't know. I'm thinking. Mm. I don't know. I can't really think of anything. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's always arguments with that. I don't know. Okay. That's, that's, I'm, drawing a a new, I'm drawing a new card for Brady because he's well, failing. What I think of is that, like, you've gotten defensive when I've, like, been friends with another girl or something. And then you get all, like, upset that you think I'm going to, they're going to steal me away. And it was, that's like, when nothing. we were, like, dating. Yeah. Like, the first three months. Yeah, and that was really stupid. No. Oh. Well, I think that's something anyone would be scared of in their first three months of dating. I guess. I don't know. Okay, next one. Oh, gosh, this is a good one. <laughs> okay, what secret single behavior do you indulge in when your partner's not around? <laughs> <laughs> I indulge in? Uh, not putting my laundry away, I'd say. What do you like, mean? I could be messy and leave the dishes. And like, and, yeah, I could just be a little. Or slob like, you, for a when you take while. your clothes off at night, you just leave them on the floor. Yeah, because that drives me insane. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, just being I messy. Can do that. Okay. I can just enjoy my life. Those are good. Do we want to do any more? I don't know. I'll give you one more, and you give me one more. Okay, All here right. we go. Okay, what does your partner bring to your life that wouldn't be there without them? Oh. I just think like companionship, like. You're my best friend, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, just getting to spend time with each other. We have both spent time in the apartment alone, and even, like, a day, and you're just, like, I don't know. I'm driven crazy when I'm here by myself. So just having that companionship with each other, mm-hmm. I guess. That's good. Okay, you can draw one. All right. Last card. I don't know if that... Oh, I'll just read it. Okay. Do you have a secret dream of something you'd like your partner to do for you? Mm, I'd like you to buy me the boots that I want right now <laughs> and give them to me oh, as a surprise. <laughs> wow. Well, that's it. Did you know that that's what it was going to be? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Well, that is that. And we just wanted to wrap it up by saying... Um, our last piece of advice, I don't even know if this is a piece of advice, but is that, um, get married. God mm-hmm. loves marriage. God loves it. But if you don't get he married, designed it. but if you don't get married, that's okay too. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> not, not everybody has to get married. Not everyone has to. It is designed by God. And it's a way of showing God's love, showing the love that God has for us every day. Like the, mm-hmm. your love for each other is the closest love that you're going to have um, as the love that God has for us, mm-hmm. the way God loves the church. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. Hope that's you guys it. enjoyed listening to mine and Brady's voice mm-hmm. today and learning all about marriage. I'll be coming at you next week with my podcast. No, we won't. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of Coffee in a Combo podcast. Um, you can follow me at Cameron Swear on Instagram, or you can follow Brady. He says at LinkedIn um, at Brady Swear because the reason he wanted me to tell you guys this is him and I are having a LinkedIn competition of who can have the most connections. So what I should be telling you, but I'm being nice, is that you should follow me and not him. But you can also follow me, Cameron Swear, at LinkedIn also. Um, yeah, and then make sure you follow the podcast because it is the hub for everything that is going on. Um, we have been having giveaways. Jenna went live. I was supposed to go live and didn't, but maybe I will still. Um, and all of our posts are all on our Instagram page, uh, at Coffee in a Combo Podcast. And if you're really feeling generous and love us a whole bunch, make sure that you go and give us a review. Um, five stars if you love us. And written reviews, they just mean so much to us. And it makes it so that our podcast is seen by others. And uh, yeah, it's up there on the charts and people will be able to find us easier. So thanks again for listening. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Marriage. That blessed arrangement. That dream within a dream.